really should add a sixth contradiction because everything about it plays opposite the way you think but it's related to the other five the sixth contradiction six being the number of man haha is that here you are in the most intimate relationship possible with holy God but what actually constitutes holiness is to disregard <laughs> the holiness. What's holy to God is the intimacy and only He can create. And you just keep saying yes. Yes, I believe in Christ's payment. Yes, I believe in this doctrine I'm getting. Yes, I show up for Bible class. Yes, I listen in Bible class. Yes, I take notes. But, you know, that's a lot of activity and it even feels like a lot of work. But actually, none of it works. God just flat makes it work. It's contradiction after contradiction. Everything that shouldn't be the way it is, is. Everything that should be the way it isn't, isn't. Okay, it's just, God turns everything on its head. So, your spiritual life is lived in your head, not in your body. In your head. And it's alien to live like that. We are bodies. We're used to expressing everything in the soul through some kind of body function. Talk, speech, hearing, doing. Spiritual life isn't little like that. So it's even harder to live because of that. It's also harder to recognize the connections that do the things that a human would value being done. For example, and the Bible plays on this a lot, a human would value you doing something for somebody else. We're, you know, all of our cultures, no matter what they are, and especially all of our religions, are just absolutely hooked on doing good deeds. In God's plan, doing a good deed can be the worst sin you can commit. Because Satan's plan is all about good deeds. So just because a deed looks good on the surface doesn't mean it's something God wants you to do. And if you're doing a good deed that God doesn't want you to do, it's not only not a good deed anymore, it's actually, you know, evil. The knowledge of good and evil. Um, it's a, it, in the Hebrew, it's all two sides of a coin. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Evil is the flip side of good, not sin. Sin, technically speaking, is a, a falling short. You aim at something and you miss. That's actually the meaning of the Greek word hamartano, usually translated to sin. In Hebrew, they got special words for it. They got all kinds of different words. Het, which just means sin in general. But it's got the connotation of, of shortfall. Okay. Shooting too far, too, shooting too sh too short. Then you've got Pesha, which is a kind of rebellion. You're sinning, it, the sin of rebellion. And then you've got the general word, but it really has a specific meaning, Awon, which means to twist. Okay? Now why am I saying all this? Because it seems like it's a sin not to do a good deed. But it can actually be evil, which is worse than sin, to do a good deed. See, Christ paid for sin on the cross. Now, evil is a type of sin, too. But it's worse than sin because it's a substitute good for what Christ or what God would have you do. Or think. Or be. 
And that gets to the heart of this. And this is the hardest thing to live with of all. In God's plan for your life, there's some kind of will every moment you're breathing that he has for your life. It's designed, his will, the will that he's got for you, is because he knows all about you and it will make you happiest, intrinsic value again, mature reason. It will make you happiness if you go with that will. Okay, but it takes almost forever to even find out that that's true. It takes even longer to find out what that will is. And that's What was it? Proving what the will of God is. But what? Where's the, where's the location of that? Stokimazo's Greek. It's not. It's not Romans twelve one through three. Be be conformed. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. Yeah, it is. Okay, Romans twelve one through three. Sorry, I, I, he, my brain is so tired. I, I wasn't hearing him right the first couple of times. Okay, so the verb is dokimazo, and it means testing for the purpose of uh, what was it? P- approving whether something is a, a valid gemstone. I'm about ready to absolutely fall asleep while I talk. The point is, is that the sixth thing is where you know what his will is for you ideally and that's what that verse trio is about every single moment well you're never going to get there but you keep aiming at it uh, what was it i post and then what was it after that katasko pondioko i sobrebeon te sano klesu to te un kriso yesu that's uh what is it um philippians 3:14 I keep on pressing toward the goal of the upward call in Christ Jesus. I think it's the English. Um, you keep aiming at it. It's a contradiction because what God's will for your life is, is often something you would never guess. Or if you guessed it, you'd say, oh no, that's too good to be true. Or that's too bad to be true. Or that's too something. And, and it invariably involves a whole lot of doing nothing. Because what you're supposed to do is ask him or wait on him or something else. You got your slot on the team. And you see something else that needs to be done and you want to do something about it. And his answer is do nothing. It's really hard to do nothing. It's like being a Buckingham Palace guard. You know, those famous guards, they just stand there and people walk up to them and try and get a reaction out of them. And they're supposed to just, you know, be stoic. Right? Most of the time, the answer is nothing. And it takes almost forever in the spiritual life to find out why that's the right answer. Sure doesn't seem like it. Everybody, oh, we should do something. March on Washington. Oh, President Obama does this. Oh, we all ought to just impeach him. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that, that's really not any different from somebody murdering somebody in order to solve a problem. You know, every sin that's committed is done to solve a problem. The allegation, the thing that makes you give in to sin, is it seems like it's going to solve a problem. It never does. Chances are doing nothing is the best thing to do. If ever you're in church, just do nothing. Now, it's going to be really hard to do nothing. If the job is vertical, if you're the fruit, not what you do, then your whole job down here is to learn and live on Bible. And in a way, the rest of the world, this is what seems so contradictory and even immoral about it, And in a way, the rest of the world, you just ignore. Now, the reason why that's so important is that, frankly, only God knows what is the right thing to do and accomplish. That's the first reason. 
Second reason is the thing that he knows that is right to do and accomplish. It's going to take a whole lot of people. So whatever you could theoretically do isn't enough. Won't work. So why would God want you to do something that doesn't work? When it's actually going to take like 50 people, and at most, maybe you got the eye. And everybody else does this other thing. But, and here's the important part, the motive, the justification, the juridical, especially the juridical, impetus for God doing anything about the situation is because you're on the planet and you're learning Him and they're not. Remember? Sodom and Gomorrah. Thank you, Dan. Didn't know what example should be brought. I'm, I'm starting to fall asleep. I'm going to have to stop talking. Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot and his family were the only ones in that Pentapolis who believed in Christ and who, I guess, had some semblance of a spiritual life, but they were all carnal when he led them out. Because the girls, you know, the woman turned back. You know, Lot was bemoaning his fate. And the girls decided to have sex with their own dad in order to preserve their, their family line. So they were all pretty much out of fellowship. But they obviously were saved. Because they, you know, listened. We're saving you. We're getting you out of there. Everybody else burnt. And people are saying, oh, it's homosexual, la di la No, you're misunderstanding the point there. The point was that they didn't listen. They got warning. They got warning. That's why those angels were in Lot's house. They were warned by Lot. They didn't care. They didn't care if it was angels. I'll bring them out so we can rape them. Know them. It's a euphemism for that. Pan Bible. Adam knew his wife and she bare Cain. Got that? So, the thing you do is like a tiny part of the whole but the justification for the whole Simon Gomorrah had to be wiped out should have been that Lot was wiped out too but because of Lot it was allowed to go on for X amount of time and then when it was too great then Lot was just taken out rather than spraying the whole city remember Abraham's argument well what if there's ten what if there's 20? What if there's 30? He did it backwards. And God said, well, I'll spare the whole city if there are that many righteous means believers. Now, you know, maybe some of them became believers while they were dying. We can hope so. But there weren't enough believers to justify sparing the city. And the idea was is that the evil was so great that the city would have to be taken down. Well, that applies in reverse to the amount of good that gets done is another form of evil. And why should God bother with it? You know, nobody wants him. So why shouldn't he stand off? But you're on the planet. So because of you, and he'll give you maybe even the role of dotting an I, which nobody's going to recognize. But actually, he's doing what he's doing partly because you're sitting there on that planet and you need that stuff. So it's the inverse of what it looks like your life means. It's really hard to live this. I, I haven't gotten it right. I can describe things. You know, whether or not I can execute the spiritual life is a whole other ball game. And I'd rank myself somewhere around a D or D minus. Maybe that's not true, but that's the way I feel about it. Carrying it out is a whole different ballgame. Just knowing what it is takes years. And most Christians don't ever find out. So what is all they're doing to do? If you're busy doing what you think, you're going to gravitate toward doing good deeds 
which means that you're doing stuff, might as well be Sodom and Gomorrah. Good and evil are two sides of a coin. And what's most evil is most good. I mean, take a look at it. What is the liberal all about? Doing good deeds in the name of government. Assign it to government. Somehow government is magically virtuous, whereas corporations are magically bad. And if, corporate, if government does it, monopoly. There's a big warning. Do not give it to government. If government does it, well, it'll be much more virtuous than when you give it to a whole bunch of corporations and they're competing with each other. So chances are they'll produce a better product. But we'll ignore that fact. And just give it a monopoly to government because government's going to be more virtuous because it's for the people. Yeah, right. You saw how that worked in Russia? You saw how that worked in China? You saw how that worked in any totalitarian state? Government by nature is a type of monopoly. You want to give it as little as possible. You have to have government. And there's only one way for government to be is a monopoly. So you give it very little. I don't care what kind of political system it is. Communism, monarchy, democracy. Give it very little because it's a monopoly by nature. Bing. So Marx is wrong. Keynes is wrong. All those dippy guys are wrong. Because this is fundamental. That's the point of what. God's talking about here. If you can't notice that government by nature is a monopoly, then whatever you propose that government be ain't gonna work. You got the diagnosis wrong in the first place. It's like somebody having cancer and you diagnose them as having a head cold. And then the patient dies and you don't know why. But you were doing your good deed, yeah, and you gave the wrong diagnosis. Why? Because you're incompetent. Why? Because you didn't learn first. And that was a big problem that Mao had in the Great Leap Forward. He assigned a bunch of peasants to be doctors. So guess what? A whole lot of people died because they weren't properly trained in medicine. Well... A whole bunch of Christians are running around not properly trained in Bible doctrine. And they're just flailing all over the place. Doing Satan's bidding, thinking that they're doing God's. Doing all these good deeds. So the ultimate contradiction here. And what do you want to call it? The, it it's not exactly a contradiction, but it seems like one. Is that you've got to find out what God wants for your life. Today, tomorrow, the next day, the next five minutes. And chances are what he wants, and it's hitting me really hard with this, so I gotta stop, is not what you think he wants. And maturation ain't gonna go nowhere if you're not getting closer and closer and more in tune with what he wants. Now the game for that is I'm always supposed to be saying, and of course you see this in the Bible all the time, the Urim and Thummim that David did, for example. Thank you, Dad, I needed a Bible example. In your mind, you're going to have a set of values, standards, ideas, do's and don'ts. To practice the vertical, practice thinking toward God like you have to ask Him what you should do. And if you got an idea in mind, can you sell it to him? Is he going to buy your argument for why you should do X or Y? I, I should eat potato chips. Why? I should not eat potato chips. Why? Because don't assume that just because, you, you know, eating potato chips would be something humans would normally consider something you shouldn't do. Don't assume that God's going to say that. Because maybe God says, well, actually, I want you to eat just one. Then Why? I mean, that's potato chips. Okay, what if you're flying a supersonic bomber? Do you turn right? Do you turn left? Of course, you can't actually turn in a bomber. It's like, you know, it'd be too much power. 
You sort of veer. But you see what I'm saying? It could be something really sophisticated. Maybe you work in medical technology and you're working with those great big gloves at a distance with radioisotopes or something. I don't think they use them like quite like that today, but I see the point. You'd be doing something really compl complicated and sophisticated. And you want to have the flow, the vertical flow of thinking, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Why this? Why that? Yes, this, that, 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 that. Like breathing. When you get that way, you'll get that way on certain things. There are going to be other areas where you're not that way. Get that way on the areas where you're not. And where you are, well, use the same mechanism on the areas you're not. That's living the spiritual life. And it doesn't play like your typical Christian expects. There's almost nothing noticeable on a horizontal level. Because it's all thought process. Because you're the work, not what you do. It's Christ in you. What was it? The Holy Spirit working in you. Not you working anything. God, what? God works in us to will and to do. There you go. Think about it.